Hi, welcome to Yoga Within's YouTube channel. My name is Lisa, and I'm going to take you through a really juicy practice for the hips today. Um, I love talking about the hips um, because they are such fundamental parts of the human body. We walk upright all the time, we're bipedal animals, and that is what makes us distinct between us and other animals or other mammals. So the hips have so much work to be done with that I thought I'd bring the practice to your mat today. So I hope you'll enjoy this hip practice. I have lined up my props over here. Um, you might wanna grab yourself, uh, if you have a yoga block, that would be great to have. Also, you can use a pillow that's um, something like a throw pillow that you have at home. Um, we'll also need some sort of cloth, like a face cloth or a dishcloth in our practice today. And then if you need to, you can have a towel handy as well in case you need to kneel on that for support. So anyways, we'll get started into the video. If you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up as well as subscribe to the channel for uh, more videos to come. Enjoy. So let's get started into this practice. Again, props, uh, if you have your face cloth handy, that would be awesome. And then a block is what I'm gonna use. The rest of the other options, pillows and blankets, up to you that you wanna have. I'm gonna slide them off to the side. Um, so I'll get you to come down to your mat. You can stay in a seated position, but I invite you to come down and lie on your mat. So choice is yours, what you feel most comfortable with to start with today. Um, if you are lying down, feel free to keep the knees bent if you have any discomfort in the low back or if you want to extend those legs all the way out you can as well finding space and openness if you are in a seated position make sure that you are comfortable and that you're at ease gently soften the eyes Allow the body to slow down. And take this opportunity for silence. And within this silence, you may find your breath. And let that breath wash over you as a wave washes up onto the beach. Let that inhale carry you forward and that exhale carry you away. Letting go and releasing. Leaving the to-do lists at the door. And simply focusing on your yoga practice the union between breath and movement and the mind. Know that your mat is supporting you through your journey today. whether you are seated or lying, take this moment to set an intention for your practice today.
to quietly bring some movement to your fingers and toes. It may feel good to bend the knees and plant the feet if you're lying and if you haven't done so already. It may feel good to knock the head from side to side or give the head a little rotation if you're seated. And then if you are in a seated position, slowly lower yourself to your back with your knees bent and your feet planted. And make sure you've kept your eyes gently opened to start our practice. Taking our fingertips and placing them on the front of our hips. Just gently rubbing the area, finding that bone, that tissue. It should be soft and relatively relaxed. And you'll feel that crease where the leg bone meets the pelvis. And that bone in the leg is what is part of that hip joint. The head of the femur is what connects into the pelvis to make that hip joint. That gentle palpation and movement with those hands gives you a sense of connection to the hip joint. And then we'll slowly peel the heel up of the right foot the knee facing up towards the ceiling. Hands can stay on those hips just to feel what's going on in your own body. It's important that you listen to your body throughout your practice and knowing how to give yourself a sense of tension but also a sense of ease at the same time. Now lowering that right foot down, peel the heel up of the left foot and see what happens. Knee is facing towards the ceiling. And then release that leg down. Now direct your attention to the back of the hip. What would be covered with our big glute muscle, our gluteus maximus. And just shift from side to side for lack of better words, from cheek to cheek. Just a gentle movement to see where is the back of my hip today. And truly what we're rocking on is the back of the pelvis and the sacrum. And that hip bone is still moving, but it is the back of the pelvis. So see if you can find a place of stillness now and an equal balance on both sides of the back of the hips or through, if you can imagine, the back of the sacrum. See if you can make that connection to your mat while maintaining that natural curve of the low back. There should still be a little bit of a curve through our lumbar spine as equally a, a nice curve through the neck. And if you're not having that nice curve, please support the head with a blankie or a towel just to ensure that you have that space behind the neck. Again, lifting and peeling that right heel up. From here, imagine that you have a paintbrush attached to your knee joint. We're going to take round circles with that paintbrush, drawing circles on the ceiling in whatever color you'd like. And then we'll take that rotation and go the opposite direction. Again, moving from that hip. It's not coming from the knee, but from that hip. And that hand is there to feel that hip moving. 
Again, reflect back onto the back of the hip. Is it still pressing into the floor? Is it lifting, which we don't want? Slow and controlled. And then release that right foot down. We'll lift that left foot up and do the exact same thing, drawing and painting that circle on the ceiling. So if for some reason, my right side, I drew red and yellow circles. And now on my left, switch the direction, I'm drawing purple and blue for some reason. Very interesting. That is what I'm seeing for my colors. Good. And then releasing that foot down. Go ahead and hug those legs right on into the thighs, squeezing those knees in. And then feel whether or not the backs of the hips have come off of the mat or are they still on the mat? So for me, right now, I know that my hips have popped up off. So I'm gonna see if I could lower my legs slightly, but still see if I can keep a connection between my thighs and my torso. So still thinking that tailbone pressing down and away, and keeping that integrity of the back of the hips to the mat. Good. In this position, you may want to do a couple ankle rotations just to get some movement through the ankles. Good. And then we'll take those feet down to the mat once more. We'll take the legs as wide apart as our mat and we'll let the knees sort of knock to side to side. Slow and controlled. And if you'd like, take the feet even further down so that the bend in your knee isn't huge. And this will focus a little bit more on releasing the muscle on the front of the hip, the psoas or the iliopsoas muscle. It's not as shortened because that hip is no longer as flexed. And letting those knees sort of knock from side to side. Now bringing that knee back, or those knees back into more of a bent position, we'll bring our feet close, close, close together, and then from there, open your our legs, I'm opening my arms too, but open my legs up as if I was opening a big encyclopedia, and letting those knees drop out to the side. And depending on your body, it might need to mean, you might need your feet closer to the groin, or if it's too much, release those feet and allow a bit more space between the groin and those heels. So find that position that feels best for you. And then from here, if it's available to you, bring the arms either out to the side or all the way up above your head, finding a nice length through the arms. And then connecting our breath to our body, let's bring our arms down as we simultaneously Close those legs. So exhale down. Inhale, reach, open up those legs, spreading up nice and big. And then exhale, close the arms and the legs. Inhale, open. Exhale, close one more time. If the arms are a little cranky today, they may open up to the side. And then closing up together. Good. Release the legs all the way down to the ground. Give them a little bit of a shake out. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. And then from there, we'll take the legs one more time, wide as the mat, nice and wide. And then let those knees fall in on each other. They're going to support each other on the midline of the body. And we're actually counterbalancing the cobbler's pose or the butterfly pose that we just did. We are now going to an internal rotation of the thighs. And we're allowing those knees to support each other while the weight of the legs is wanting to go to the middle. So releasing those hips in the opposite way that we were just working them. Now we can take those arms as well and let them float up towards the ceiling and we can cross them as well, hugging in. Inhaling, opening up, 
Changing the cross of the arms. Exhale, knees come in, arms come across. And we'll do one more on each side. Inhale, open. Changing the cross. Exhale, close. And then inhale, open. Last one. Exhale, close. Give yourself a nice hug. Oh, that feels good. And then releasing, bending those knees, bringing the feet all the way in, coming onto your side and pressing yourself all the way up to a seated position. Now in terms of seated, I uh, typically always use my foam block, but you can also use a pillow. I sit on it so that it can lift my hips and it gives me a bit more, a little bit more mobility through my pelvis. So in my body, it really appreciates this lift. So I'm sitting here and just giving you a demonstration of, excuse me, how to sit on that block. You might notice it sort of pops up because I'm really just sitting on the edge. If you had a pillow, the same thing would sort of apply. You would just set it down here and you would also not sit right in the middle of it, but you would come right onto the edge of it. So finding out if you need to sit on something is sort of your own personal journey to see what works best for you. So we're gonna to come to that seated position and I will give you a uh, I'll face you this time. We'll have our legs in a comfortable cross position so that Sukhasana might be stacked ankles on ankles is what I typically sit in, but you can also have that more formal cross-legged position. And just have your um, face cloth or dishcloth sort of handy. You don't need it just, just yet, but it is close at hand if you need it or when you need it. And then from here, we'll sit up nice and tall and we're going to take ourselves through a little bit of rotation. So coming forward and rotating around. And every time you come uh, through your rotation, just feel like, so now I'm on my, my right side, I can feel the impact of my right hip coming through and around. And now I'm coming over to the left side, I can feel that hip. So feel if you can feel that sensation of the grounding that you have with your pelvis and your hips on the ground or on your block, every part of your rotation. And then we'll switch and go the opposite direction. So really being engaged with the movement patterns or what's actually happening in your body is so important to our yoga practice. That's the whole point is connecting the mind and body. So really tap into what is happening today at my hip joints. Good, we'll take ourselves one more time through. Oh, this feels good on the spine though, I would say. Oh, it feels good. Excellent. Now take those legs, cross them the opposite way. And if you want that challenge, don't use your hands. Oh my goodness, here we go. Hoo -hoo. There we are. So I'm doing stacked ankles, but you can do the cross-legged position. So you have nice and tall, excellent. Take those left fingertips and let them come out to the side, walking to the side. We'll take a nice little side bend. Open and spiral that chest forward. And if you can, you can look up, up, up towards the ceiling, depending on how that neck is feeling today. And then take that gaze back forward and walk ourselves back up, thinking length through the side of the body, coming to the other side, walk those fingertips over. Spiral that chest open and take that gaze up, up, up. Good, and then walk those fingertips back up, taking those fingertips on the left-hand side, coming over, over, over. Maybe add that other arm, nice long weaver, find length. And feel how that hip now on the, uh, that would be my left side, is actually pressing down significantly more than the right. It's popped up a bit. So see if you can balance that out. Maybe get both hips down. And then up, oh, a little bit of arm work, coming over. See if you can draw a straight line from the fingertips of your top arm all the way to the fingertips of the bottom arm. Good, reach. And then let those fingertips come up. Excellent. Let's not deny those arms too much. Bring those arms forward, bringing, kissing the wrists together, arms apart. Take a deep breath in as you open up, and a deep breath out as you close. Switch directions, open up, and close. 
Switch directions, open up. Now can you go a little faster? And breathe just through the nose. One more time on each side. Good, and then relax, good. Getting those lungs involved, those shoulders involved, excellent. So now take your left hand, bring it onto that right thigh, swim those fingertips back behind you, tent them up, sitting up nice and tall, and then see if your rotation comes from that lower belly. Rotate lower belly, mid belly, maybe the ribs, the chest, the shoulders, and then take your twist to wherever it may land. You're welcome to look over that back shoulder, or like me, I'm keeping my head in line with my spine. So I'm focusing more on that mid spine and lower spine as opposed to my cervical spine through my neck. Try not to crank with those arms. We want the movement coming from the spine and then slowly release. Take those right fingertips to the top of the left thigh. Swim those left fingertips back, tent them up, sit nice and tall. Inhale in, and as you exhale, twisting around that spine, lower belly, mid belly, ribs, chest, shoulders. Where's that, that twist there for you today? And then taking that gaze either over the shoulder if you'd like, or keeping that gaze forward over the chest. That's where I am today. Good, sit up tall, and then release. Let's go through one more time on both sides. This time, see if you, your fingertips can be a, a, lighter, um, a lighter touch. So we're not pressing hard. Think about them being soft and that rotation, again, coming just from the spine. So we're not using the arms to move us, we're using the torso to move us. Good, and then those two sit bones that we're sitting on, part of that hip complex, are they balanced on that block or on the floor? Good, and then release. See if you can let those hands come with you. And then twist, twist, twist with the torso, not with the arms. Good, and then release. Nice job. Release those legs out forward. Give them a bit of a shake out. Bend those knees quite generously. I'm gonna have mine about hip width apart, but you're welcome to have them close together. My hips don't love this close together position, so I come hip width apart. And then taking that torso, bringing it down towards the thigh, see if you can hug those thighs into the torso by using the arms underneath. So really press the heels down to the feet. Keep the integrity of the spine, though. You have a nice long, let, a long neck as an extension of the spine. Press that torso towards the legs. And then see, can those heels press out in front of you? They're slowly moving forward. I'm still keeping my knees bent, keeping my hips equal on that block or the floor. And then see how far I can go with my forward fold today. Again, this is our first one of the day technically, so we're not going to go super far. Good. Take those fingertips back by the hips and push yourself back up. Good. Give those legs a bit of a shake out. And then again, bending those knees, sitting up nice and tall. As you exhale, hinge forward from the hip, bringing the torso towards the thighs. And maybe this time, those legs go straighter as you come into that forward fold. Finding length all the way down the spine, those fingertips might come forward and land parallel to the ankles. Or not, find where it feels good. Good, fingertips can come back towards those hips and sitting up nice and tall. This is where the face cloth comes in, my friends. So I'm going to sit back so you can see me in the point of view of the camera. But we're going to take that face cloth and place it underneath my right foot. Okay, or my right heel, I should say. Or I should say my right heel. Here we go. Sitting up nice and tall. Let those fingertips come back to your side. Coming into your staff pose. Dropping the shoulders down as you're lifting up and out of the torso. If I was there with you, I could see that your body is at a 90 degree angle at the hip joint. And that hip is now going to come out to the side and come back together. 
We are abducting and now adducting. Moving that hip through that hip joint. Moving so that the towel, that the face cloth is gliding on the floor. Now, of course, if you're on carpet, this isn't necessarily ideal. So the face cloth may not work. You want to actually maybe elevate that leg and come side to side. A whole heck of a lot, a lot of work there happening if that's what you need to do. But if you are on hardwood or linoleum, you might be able to get that gliding action in. Good, and then taking that face cloth, switching with the other side over to the left hand side, readjust, see where that pelvis is in the back of the hips, what are they doing? Fingertips ground in, they're part of your foundation, and then let that leg come out and in, out and in. Again, if you're on carpet, elevate that leg. Oh yeah, that just fired up my leg. Whew. Out and in, out and in. One more time, out and in. Whew. Good job, everyone. Take the legs now up, about up, and we'll say face cloth apart. There it is, the face cloth in between my legs. And then from here, slowly let the toes knock in and knock out. Gently holding with those arms if you'd like, gently in and out. Good. And just for fun, let's take ourselves again, that heel, that right heel is on top of that face cloth. We're going to come out and then switch to the other side, out. Oh, it's like a game of catch with our heels. Out, out. Engage through the middle. It's gonna keep you upright. I've taken my hands away from myself so I can feel all my hips working. Again, it's all about feeling that sensation. We're in ease, but we're still working. Keep going in and out of those. Whoops, I lost it. <laughs> in and out of the heels. Here we go. Whew. Okay, two more. Last one. Here we go. Nope, that's a lie. We got one more on this other side. Equal on each side. Oh, and release. Give those legs a shake. So all about hip abduction and adduction. And then we did internal and external rotation, that rotation at the hip. Whew, that feels good. Feeling a little heat, feeling a little warmth. We're going to dive forward onto hands and knees. So you don't need your props out of the right now. You can throw them aside. If you do, however, have some cranky knees, feel free to double over your mat for some cushion or take yourselves with a towel or a blankie under the knees. We're just going to come onto hands and knees for just a little bit here. So hands right underneath those shoulders. Make the uh, eyes of the elbows face each other. Engage those fingers. Press down to the bottom or the tops of the feet. And then from here, we're going to rock slightly forward and back just to feel that motion. And then you might get a little fun and start moving the hips in different ways. So nothing super formal. It's almost just like a a rotation and a, a knocking from side to side for the hip. Try and keep that neck in line with the spine just to sort of ease out through those hips. And then when you're ready, take the toes, the big toes together, bring those knees nice and wide, and then press those hips all the way back. Really ground those hips back towards the heel. And then choices here, come down so that you can cradle the head to make sure the neck is nice and long. You can also stack fists, one on top of the other, and press those hips back. You can also stack palms on palms. Or if you want to come into the full, long, extended child's pose, feel free to come all the way here. But really making sure that those hips press back all the way to the heels, finding length through the spine, and keeping that nice, long movement. Good, and then slowly coming back up. We're going to come onto our knees. So I'm gonna to come to face you to see what this looks like. But again, you can adjust the, um, the mat for support under those knees. 
We'll come onto our one side. So kick your left leg out to the side. We're strong through those right sides. So stack knee, hip, and shoulder on top of each other. So what I've now done is I've taken my hip and I've opened it up to the side. I've actually abducted it out to the side. So from here in our gate pose, press down through both feet. So the top of the foot may be down or the toes might be tucked on that back foot. So just so you can see that. So just up to you how you want to do that. But I think ah, today I think I'm going to do tuck toes feel good to me right now. So ah, no, I'm actually going to tuck my toes back under. So shoelace side for me. And then press into that pinky toe so that it's cutting the side of the mat here. It's really active. And then from here, let's float our arms up to the sides. So here, press the hips forward as I try to draw them together. So just do the actions of the hips. Good. Agile through the feet. And then slowly come over to your right hand side. Plant the hands down. And then see if the top hand wants to come all the way over for a nice long body stretch. Good, spiral the chest, open, 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 open. And see if you can take the gaze towards the ceiling. Again, we're looking for ease. Now, up to you, take the gaze forward. Allow that back leg to come up. Strong through the heel, press through the heel. Keep the integrity here as best as you can, that strong line. And then add that little bit of leg lift little bit more through the hip, combining balance, strength, flexibility, all in one. Good, and then lower that leg down. Take that arm all the way over, allow yourself to go through that long stretch again. Excellent, watch the elbows, slight bend in them. And then use the strength of your leg, gather up your inner thighs as you come back up to the starting position. Allow the hands with the straight leg out, come down, lift straight up, and then just kind of counter pose it the other direction. You can take that gaze up towards the ceiling. And then release that gaze and come back. Good, lower those arms. We'll let those legs come back together. From here, we'll press our hips back once more, but keep those knees glued together. Let's take ourselves down into a nice long child's pose once more. If your forehead does not reach the floor, make sure that you use stacked hands or fists. And then just give your forehead a little, little rub. So right between the two brows, with just a little bit of a massage. Third eye chakra, feels good. Get yourself ready, coming up onto those knees once more. This time sending out the right leg to the side. Again, pressing through the pinky side. You can tuck the toes or press on the shoelace side of the foot. I'm sticking with the shoelace side. Took me a little while to think about it, but feels better this way for me today. Let those arms come out to shoulder height, nice and strong. Allow yourself to tip over, 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 reach, 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 and let those hands stack. Feel free to take that gaze up. And then if you'd like, take that arm all the way over, one straight line from the heel all the way up to fingertips on that right hand side. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. And then as you're ready, shift that weight, lift up that leg, Good, and take it into some hip ab and adduction again, just like we did with that face cloth, except now we're not on the floor, we're in air. Good, strong through the middle, press those hips slightly forward, pelvis comes forward, little bit of balance, last one. Good, and then drop that foot down, allow yourself to have a nice long reach once more. And then gather those inner thighs up. Use those legs to bring you back up so you're stacked. 
hand comes down and let's just counter pose that on the other side. So just allowing that pelvis to still stay forward and getting that lateral bend on the other side. So getting a little openness through the left hip as well, that support leg, getting a little movement. Good. And then jump. Lower those arms down, gather in the knee. And then from here, plant both hands and tuck toes under so that you come back into this little tiny ball. Gather yourself up. Make yourselves as tiny as possible. Little tiny ball. Good. And then from here, plant your heels down as you slowly straighten your knees. Keep the chest and the thighs connected, or the torso and the thighs connected. And give yourself a nice long forward hold. Release the head to the floor. If hands are touching the floor, they can cradle elbows. They can come in the back of the calves. Find that length to the spine. Of course, if this doesn't feel good for you, make sure the knees are generously bent. The elbows may come to thighs. And then slowly, with intention, roll, roll, roll all the way up. So coming to the uh, long side of your mat, we're going to go lengthwise through our mat. We'll take our legs nice and wide. So we just did some abduction, taking our legs wide. So we're opening those legs out and just take those hips, again, palpate those hip cre creases and knock those hips from side to side. So not only is the leg bone moving, but it's the pelvis that's tipping from side to side. So there's a little bit of crunch through the spine on this side, equal amount on that side. So see if we can just get that movement happening through the hips. Good. Now really, really press down through the outside of those two feet. Really think of the pinky toe, active, active, active. Take the hands to the hip creases. Standing nice and tall, deep breath in. And then as you exhale, slowly, slowly, slowly fold forward. Let's bring that torso just parallel to the floor. Really thinking length through the spine, crown of the head coming towards the front, tail is coming out to the back, soft through the knees, strong through those big toes, and then inhaling, slowly coming back up. Good. Deep breath in, standing nice and tall. Option here to add those arms out to the side. Exhale, coming down parallel to the floor. Airplane arms, I suppose we could call them. Good. Lengthen, lengthen, lengthen. Now strong through those legs, inhaling, coming all the way back up. Making yourself really, really big. If you like, a little bit more challenge. Arms coming overhead. Hinging at those hip creases, coming forward, forward, forward. Finding length through the spine, long through the spine. And really bring that crown forward. Good, and strong through those legs, coming all the way up. The legs are shaking for me. Woo! And then release those arms. Good. Set those feet back together. Give those legs a bit of a shake out. And then coming into our mountain pose, feet, but for me, are gonna be hip width apart, but for you, they might be quite narrow. So find the position that works best for you. Drawing up energy from the ground, really power up those legs, soften through the heart, drop those shoulders down. See if we can get that chin parallel to the floor. And then take the gaze down slightly and reconnect to that breath. Send your breath to the hips. Good. 
good. And then take those hands to the hip, gaze comes back forward, bend gently through those knees. And then similarity of how we did it with the legs wide, slightly different. Instead of doing sort of the knocking side to side, um, we're gonna kind of almost go down and up with the hips. So tiny, tiny little squats as we come down and up. And so you can see my torso slightly rotating forward. Let's try to keep that torso as upright as possible. Rocking from side to side. Good, just a couple more. Excellent. Okay, from here, we'll step those legs wide once more. But this time, we will take our um, right leg and open it up so that the toes are facing the short end of the mat. So my legs are still fairly wide. That back foot comes to a slight angle, around 45 degree angle, but making sure that both feet are pressing down into the ground. Take a moment to lift your toes up off the ground and then plant them back down, making sure they're nice and active. Keep an eye on the knees. So here's my locked out knee. Watch that there's just a slight bend in the knee so we're not hyperextending that knee. Now the hips are in a very wide open position as well as this leg is externally rotating out, that right leg. So abduction and external rotation on this front leg. From here, take those hands to those hips and we're going to practice that hip movement once more as we press that hip back out towards the back leg. Rocking side to side, trying to keep that front knee straight. Good, and then really press it out. Hold that hip as it's coming in. So we've almost planted that front hip into that hip socket quite a bit. We've pushed it in. And then we're actually trying to let that back hip come out and away from the pelvis. Let those fingertips float up. And then from here, we're going to track that torso over that front leg. So keeping that pelvis strong, feet engaged. Once we feel we've reached as far as we can, we'll allow that hand to come down in between the, or on the inside of the thigh, stacking arm on arm into our triangle pose. So really try to get length through your torso so we're not collapsing into it. Yes, I can touch the ground, great hooray. I'd rather have that integrity, that strength through my legs and my pelvis and my hips instead of falling forward. Good, hold it here. Good, one more breath cycle. And then use those legs to bring that torso all the way. Good, release those arms, roll that foot in, bring the feet relatively parallel to each other and just give those legs a bit of a shake out again. Again, that movement of shifting of where that hip, or excuse me, where the top of that bone of the leg lands in that hip socket. Okay, other side, roll open that left foot, slight angle on that back leg, your foundation is key. Really lift up through those inner thighs, hands to those hip creases. Externally rotated now through that left leg. Here we go. Those hips wanna to try to stay facing forward as that hip rolls out. And then see if you can add that hip movement. Really rotate it back as the front hip comes in. Feel what's happening at those hip joints. Watching the integrity of that front knee, not locking out. Good, and then inhale, let those fingertips float up. Really reach as you press that hip back. Reach, 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 extend through the torso. Reach, reach, and then slowly tip. Hand comes on the inside of the thigh, arms stacked on, st on each other. And then see if you can open up that spine, spiral open. Gaze can be up, forward, or down. And again, I'm not falling into my triangle. Yes, I can touch the ground. But see if you can add strength to this pose. Equal pressure on hand and, and lower leg. 
I'm pressing, I'm pressing, I'm pressing, I'm opening, I'm lengthening, I'm lengthening. Good, one more breath here. And then as you exhale, power up those legs. And coming up. Lower those arms. Rotate that foot in. This time I like you to step all the way in and then just give those legs a shake out. Nice work. So we'll finish up with a little bit of balance while we're standing. So coming to that mountain pose again, feet about hip width apart or narrower, your choice. And from here, let's see here, let's peel that. Let's go with the left this time. Peel that left heel up off the ground. Really root down through that right foot. And then if you're ready, you can slowly bring that leg up. I don't know if you can see, I shifted a little bit. So watch that shift. My hips are a little tired. They wanna shift over. So feel, again, use your hands. Feel what's going on at the hip joint. And depending on where you are with your balance today, well, clearly I'm a little off, um, will depend on where you are here. So hold it while the knee is up. So we're flexing the hip. But now I want you to bring the leg and bring it back behind you, skimming the two knees together. Here's our extension of the hip. Can you hold that position as you open the front of the hip and work whoop, the back of the hip? Now, of course, if you need support, please use a chair or a wall. Good, hold that hip in place. Keep those ribs down and then bringing that hip into that flex position again. Straighten the knee and allow that leg to come all the way down. Good job. Whew. All right, coming over now to that right foot. Ground down into that left foot. Peel that heel up of the right foot. And then shifting, you can see, there I go. Shifting up. Shift up and lift that leg up off the ground. You may want to flex that foot. Hip is in flexion right now. Iliopsoas is really working to hold that leg there. A little bit of my quad doing that hip flexion as well. And then taking the leg back behind, slow and control, lifting out of that support leg, pressing that heel back. Hip extension, glutes. Here's the glutes time. Contracting and standing tall, bringing that hip back, foot back behind us and balancing and breathe. Good. Allowing that leg to come forward, flexing at the hip. And then kick that leg out so that the leg's straight. Oh yeah. And then slowly bring that heel back down. Good work everybody. Give those legs a bit of a shake out. Alrighty, we're going to head back down to the mat with uh, coming to our belly. So let's take ourselves into a nice good downward or another nice forward fold. Take a deep breath in and then as you exhale, bend those knees, hinge at those hip creases, come all the way to that nice good forward fold. Take a moment to let it release. You may feel coming or weaving side to side, feels good. Good, and then plant the hands by generously bending those knees and then coming down onto your hands and knees and all the way down onto your tummy. So from here, we're going to take palms on palms to support the forehead. Here we go. Bend the uh, right knee and we will flex that right ankle. Pressing the pelvis down into the floor, so your um, pelvic bone in the front of your body, your your pubic uh, pubic symphysis, I want to say. There we go, um, is pressing down. So that's where the the very peak of your pelvis is, the very front of the pelvic bowl. Is going to press into the mat and then slowly lifting the leg up, just as we had done standing a moment ago. We're bringing that leg back behind us. So thinking about the movement not coming from the back, but coming from the hip extensors, the glutes. So lift up, very, very small movement. 
Break through here. A little bit of hamstring coming into play as well. Lift, lift, lift. And then release. Good. Lower that right leg down. Bring the left leg up. Flex that left foot. And I'm solely looking forward just so you can hear my voice rather than my head down. But everyone else, please have your forehead down on your hands. Then taking that hip and bringing it back behind us. Contract through the back of the hip. The glute on the left side is doing the work. Press up, press up, press up. And then slowly release that leg down. Go ahead and release the leg and just shift the pelvis from side to side. And then what we'll do is we'll keep the legs down on the ground, press really generously down through the tops of your feet. Allow the head to come down and the arms come down to the side. So palms are open, pressing down into the floor. We're going to slowly peel the forehead, the nose, the chin up off. As we lift the torso up, press gently through the hands and lift the torso up off the floor. Take a breath here and then slowly lower back down, chin, nose, and then forehead lands last. Again, peeling that forehead up, nose, chin, chest opens up. You might feel you might crease those fingertips slightly further down towards your feet as you lift up, up, back extension here, and then slowly coming all the way back down. One last time, my friends, keeping those glutes relatively relaxed. Again, forehead, nose, and chin, find length forward before you try to lengthen back. Press down through the tops of the feet, engage the legs, but glutes are relatively soft. Hold, and then slowly release back down. Good work, everyone. Go ahead and take those legs, you can knock them from side to side in sort of a, a wheel, windshield wiper action. And then from there, we're going to keep the hands in the same place. Feet are um, flexed, so both legs are bent up. Feet are flexed, so 90 degree angle at the knee. We're going to put it all together, my friends. One big move, one time. Here we go. So lifting up the forehead, nose, chin. Legs are extending back behind me. Lifting up, lifting up, lifting up. Strong through those feet. Lift so that pelvis is grounded into your mat, long through the spine, and then let it all come down. Excellent work. Press yourself back, come back into a nice child's pose, dropping those hips towards the heels. Let the head come down, and this time just swing those arms back behind and clasp those heels. So get yourself into that tiny, tiny little child's pose, and just take a moment and breathe. And then release those hands, press yourself up, we'll walk come closer to the middle of your mat, swing your legs out to the side, planting those feet down. So although this will feel like you would think an abdominal exercise, it is a lot of the hip flexor that does do the work as soon as we get relatively low. So slowly bring the, the body down, so abdominals are bracing. Hands can be on the backs of the thighs or out to the sides, and then slowly come down and down. And now I know right here, my hip flexors are on fire. They are the ones, excuse me, that are doing that work to hold me there. Abdominals, not as much. So hip flexor, hip flexor, hip flexor. Oh yeah, relax those shoulders, and then let the whole body come down to the mat. Great job, release those legs. And then just see if you can get a little bit of length in through now that hip flexor. They did a ton of work, so just give themselves maybe a little bit of a rub down, nice long. How about we take those arms up above our heads, nice long stretch. 
and then releasing those arms, bending those knees once more, take the left leg and plant it onto the right thigh, keeping that strong foot, that flexed foot. Hands can come down at the side. We're just gonna allow that right leg to come out towards the side. And so we don't need to bring it down to the ground. There's no reason for us to get it there. So I can go here, but I just wreck the whole integrity of my body. So instead, I'm just gonna let the body come. And the second it feels like my uh, left hip is coming off the ground, I'm gonna stop. I'm not going any further. I just really wanna see if I can get some length in through the back of the hip. Now, if we wanted to add that twist, we definitely can. So then we would turn this more into a spinal twist versus a huge hip release. So we can go there, here we are. And in some cases, I like to have my block here. So I bring my floor up to the block. There we are. You may or may not need that or want that. Good, and then releasing. We'll come to the other side. So bringing that right ankle onto the left thigh. Again, first and foremost though, we're just allowing that leg, that left leg to come out. But as soon as this pops up, then I've lost it. So I just wanna get that slight lift, trying to keep that hip down as that left leg goes out to the side. Getting a little bit more through the attachments on the sacrum with the glutes. And then if you wanna add that twist, let the leg come all the way over. Allow that twist to happen. Again, I have a block there just for a little bit of support. And then release the legs. Might feel good to take them wide and just knock them from side to side sort of releasing any sort of tension through the hips. It might feel good to sort of lift them up and rock them a bit, a bit of pelvic tilting. That can feel good. So take this moment right now to finish with whatever pose that feels good. I myself am just gonna simply take my knees to chest and you can take it into a happy baby or anything else that feels good for you in this position right before we head into our final pose, our Shavasana and corpse pose. So find that comfortable position on your mat, maybe lying, if you have any props that you'd like to use, a bolster or having a blanket over you, and go ahead and grab it now. Take your feet quite comfortably apart, arms at your sides, releasing the body to the mat. Just do a quick check of the neck and see what's happening there. Do you need a little lengthening? You might wanna take your hands and gently pull the, the hair off your neck as well as kind of find some lengthening through the neck. Relax the arms off to the side. Might take this moment too to see what's the posterior or the back of my body doing at the hips. So if, if I think about it, is that still balanced on the right and the left? And then let that go, let that go completely. And release the body to the mat. Taking deep breaths in. And softening deep breaths out. Take your breath and direct it to the tips of your toes. Softening the gaze and closing the eyes, direct that breath all the way up the legs. Let that breath relax and find space through the legs and now up and through the hips. Imagine that breath swirling around the pelvis, in and around the bones of the hips. And 
finding lots of space. Then send that breath up through the belly and the chest and all the way around the torso. Let the breath come through the shoulders and down each arm all the way to the fingertips. And then finally, let that breath flow up to the crown of the head, finding space through the neck, through the jaw, softening the brow, and relaxing the whole entire body. And bringing your attention back to your body, back to your space, and back to your day. Gently move your fingertips and toes. Rock your head from side to side. And then take your knees and bend them and plant the feet on your mat. Roll on to your right hand side, cradle your head with your arm. Take a couple of breaths here before you press yourself up to the seated position. And as you're ready, open up your eyes. Find a comfortable seated position, supporting your hips, your back, and your torso. I hope this practice has served you well and that your intention you set at the beginning of class was fulfilled. And we'll seal our practice with our hands at our heart. So take a deep breath in and feel the breath move through the chest as it opens up the chest. That prayer position might move into the chest. And let that exhale come rushing out smoothly and softly. And we'll finish with Namaste.